Have you thought of breaking through? Ain't it part of what you do? Catch a victim while he's dumb. Break his larynx with your well, It's high time. It's time to get high. Well, this ain't no goddamn dream. It's exactly what it seems. Wake up today just to lay back down and say I won't be coming back let's call it a heart attack give me some of that knack this is just a final payback they all flipped on me took my passions left me be when I had a place to sit a goddamn attitude to fit talk And welcome back, boys and girls, for another special Patreon edition of the Michael Deacon program. Joining me tonight is Marshall Masters. He is a preparedness author who has written extensively about Earth changes, space threats, and sustainable survival strategies. He focuses on helping survival community leaders develop affordable and effective communication strategies using two-way radios. His latest books, Win-Win Survival Handbook, and Radio Free Earth provide comprehensive guides to survival communications. Marshall's mission is to empower individuals and communities to prepare for challenges and ensure their safety. Now, without further ado, let's get down to brass taxes and bring in Marshall. And joining me right now is Mr. Marshall Masters. How are you, sir? I am doing great. It's good to be back. Yeah, it's been about a month or so. Yeah. That's yeah. too long, Marshall, and so much has happened already around the world, and not just around the world, but outside of the world in terms of uh, space and uh, with our own sun as well. Scientists are kind of worried right now. They're always talking about, well, I shouldn't say they're always, I should say they mentioned solar flares, and, you know, Marshall, you're someone who's been talking about solar flares and Planet X and weird weather, basically, and all of this is happening right now in real time yeah yeah and um it's i thank god that i have been out there and i've been doing this for you know since 1999 and because right now i am so suppressed on this topic right it's amazing i mean to your listeners out there go on youtube and type in planet x martial masters you might find a few scraps of stuff I did years and years ago. You're not going to find any of my current stuff. You're not going to find anything. And, and yet, my Yao Books channel on YouTube has over 19 million views today. That's a lot of views. And yeah, the material I find from you goes back 12, 13 years ago. There's nothing really recent from you there. It makes me wonder, why on earth are you so suppressed, Marshall? Because my Planet X research is credible. It's observation-based. If you look at the other uh, Planet X, it, it's a lot of speculation. Uh, you tend to see people that are making unfounded claims and speculations. There's a lot of disinformation. They're trying to steer the whole conversation to Planet Nine, which is a, a hoax cover-up. Planet Nine was never real. It was an invented piece of stuff to uh, suppress something else entirely. There were astronomers that discovered an old brown dwarf star out at the furthest edge of the system, and uh, which raised the prospect of us being in a binary star system, which is a taboo. If you're an astronomer, 
uh, number one, you don't talk about Planet X, rule number one. Rule number two is you don't talk about we're in a binary star system. And rule number three is you do not talk about the possibility of sentient life on another body somewhere in our system. And if you do those three things, uh, <laughs> you're, you're going to wind up in a shallow grave. Um, and they have. A lot of astronomers have been killed. But right now, I am seeing the uh, reporting that is coming in, and it is massive. Um, people are, and, and what's interesting is people are seeing multiple objects. And I think that is, that's, that's huge, the fact that they're seeing multiple objects. Right. And um, there's more people are um they're what i find it is a big shift in the observations that i'm seeing because as you know i've been doing this probably i don't know going on 15 years right and i i've always been one of the top image analysts because all of my work is observation based i report on things we are seeing whether people are observing an object in the sky, two suns in the sky, but also we're tracking fireballs and earthquakes. So we're reporting on that with our science series. And this information is, um, is, is changing now. And I'm seeing, and it's a good change, what I am saying. Uh, people are, it used to be always, uh, YouTube was where people were posting their observation videos. And with YouTube, that has really slacked off. Uh, I would say by 90% or more from what I'm seeing. And people are now doing more on, uh, number one is TikTok. It's be TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook are the three that we're seeing more of these. And it's also in the small, you know, the smartphone format, which is instead of um, nine by uh, nine by sixteen, uh, it's sixteen by nine. It's a different, you know, the different. It's the portrait instead of the landscape orientation. Right, right. And I'm seeing a lot more of those. What I love about them is that people are talking while they're recording and they're asking open questions. Why is it doing this? Why is it doing that? Why is my phone seeing this and all of this stuff? And I really feel that these are, this is really, really excellent. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I think probably I'm thinking in August to start downloading some of these videos and actually talking to the people and answering their questions. Oh, that'd be a great idea, actually. Yeah. So I want to say I can do it, and I want to see where I can do it without being body slammed <laughs> yes. and suppressed. You know, because boy, they really, they just don't want me to be known. They want to, you know, and the suppression is uh, the Planet X suppression. I mean, it all started actually with. Uh, where they started slamming me down when I was starting to write articles about uh, the current MAGA movement and things that are going on. And this is when they really went after me and, and started the shutdown, um, the shadow banning and all of that. But, you know, I've pretty much moved on from that. Right. Um, I'll tell you what, are, are we on going to be on YouTube for this? Most likely, but I mean... Maybe some parts might not be there when we upload. Okay. The, uh, cause I could tell you what set them off on me. Sure. Go ahead. Well, this was interesting. This was an article I wrote in 21, early 21. And what happened was I happened to see a video that was from the dark web uh. that had been reposted on BitChute. And one of my, um, uh, I get a lot of people all the time passing me tips, and somebody said, go take a look at this before it's gone. And I went to it, and what it was was a video that had been captured of a adrenochrome processing facility somewhere out in the Orient, and looked like Philippines. 
Mm. The um, the video started out with a truck backing up to the dock, and there were the bodies of young men in their 20s, perfectly healthy bodies, and they were offloading them like cordwood and just literally just throwing them off the truck onto a pile. And um, they were doing that. Then the video moved on to someone who was shooting this video at this time was a person either of authority or under the control of someone of authority. Yikes. Because they had free hand to do this. And they were, it. the whole thing focused in on following a young toddler, a girl, and she was, you know, how toddlers, when they start walking, they have that stilted walk. Right, yeah. Well, she was stilted, and mm. you, just looking at her, you knew she was loved. She had a beautiful little dress. She was, I mean, whoever was her mother just absolutely adored this child, took such beautiful care of her, and this girl is there whoever shooting the video was following her from behind as she's walking into this facility and there were a whole bunch of workers in the facility and they were actually stepping back and they were very quiet because you could see them looking at the person taking the video and they understood that they need to to step back from it they were kind of curious as to why the you could see they were looking at her and they were, you know, trying to understand why she was there. Uh, this was, had a long hallway and there were gurneys on both sides and there were bodies on all the gurneys that had been gutted like fish. Wow. All right. And the intestines were draping over the side of the gurneys and all the way down to the floor in little piles. So they would just pull out their intestines and just drop it right there and then start going for the other organs. And what was happening was there's following this little toddler and she is walking through this. And this is macabre to see this, this beautiful little child walking past waterfalls of intestines is about the only way to say it. And it was, she was, absolutely hysterical with terror you could see it and then she you what you see this here's the interesting thing you see this and you go it's bad and you know it's bad and it shouldn't be that way but it's when you hear the children that's when it cuts you to a knife because i'm sitting there watching this little girl and she's you know walking past all these intestines and she's searching for her parents mm. and she's calling out mama dada mama dada mama dada mama dada like this and to hear it oh my god michael it's a pretty it messed up video your... marshall huh i said that's a pretty messed up video oh god yeah bit shoot pulled it down an hour later and uh bit shoot has if you look at their terms of service they you know they basically say we don't talk about pedophilia and human trafficking period and it's a non-starter topic on bit shoot so the video was pulled mm. and the thing was but i saw it and i heard this child that doesn't go away you can't unremember that you can't unsee it you can't unhear it but i will tell you when you hearing it is a hundred times worse than seeing it and seeing it is terrible but when you actually hear these children crying, it just cuts you like a knife. And so I wrote about it in an article on yowza.com, uh, which is my site. I own it and I maintain it. And uh, what I did was I, I described it briefly. And then I just said, about these people that were doing this to these children and these and these all of these victims, but particularly with the children. And I said, God's judgment will be heard through the voices of children. And that was what I said. God's judgment will be heard through the voices of children. Well, that set it off. And I didn't even know that's what, what it was. I had to actually reverse engineer months of correspondence going back to that original article. 
and with AdSense, and I had uh, Google advertising on my site, AdSense on Yowza. And so I was getting AdSense messages that were saying, you're violating our community rules. And I'm going, huh, it's my, I'm not on Google. Yeah. I'm not on one of your platforms. I, this is my platform. I pay the freight here. Okay. Excuse me. You know, I'm going to talk about what I want. But what happens is, is whenever you use any product uh, from Google or Facebook or any of these social media companies, mm. if you look at the terms of service, you forfeit ownership right of free speech. Y yeah, that too. They now, what you do is in order to, to get the revenue, it was... Uh, you have to abdicate your own autonomy. And now you have to do what they want to do or they're going to punish you. Right. If it's on their server, it belongs to them, not you. That's right. Unfortunately. And, so, uh, and if it's your website, it doesn't matter because your website is now theirs because you're using one of their products. And in their terms of service, you've, you've abdicated your rights, your constitutional rights. So what I did was I just said, well, I don't, you know, I don't make that much on AdSense. <laughs> yeah. So to hell with it. Sure. I'll just remove it. Okay. And then I'm not going to offend you guys anymore. And I pulled out everything on AdSense, pulled out all the ads. And then next thing I knew, there's a huge banner ad that was appearing at the top of my home page that Google was putting up there. And I had no earthly idea where the hell this was, you know, how this was going there. I couldn't find the embed code anywhere. So I got my web developer and I said, I can't figure out how to pull this out. And they actually had to go do some deep system stuff. Google gets, uh, once, once they get in, they start doing shit. And, uh, and it took my developer some time. They found the code and they removed it. And so that was it. I had no more AdSense ads running. The day after that, I got a termination of service from AdSense. And they terminated my site and they terminated my YouTube channels and everything. And then Facebook won't let me log in. Uh, I mean, basically, they all went to war on me and crushed me because I talked about a little child that is clearly dead by now. She's been harvested for her adrenochrome. And it was all because I saw a little girl walking past intestines hanging off of these gurneys, searching for her parents and crying out. Yeah. Mama, dada, mama, dada. By the mama, way, Marshall, dada. how on earth did you even come across this video? I have people that send me tips all the time and I follow up on them. And that's how this was. It was a white hat. Someone threw it at me to see. And so... You uh, took a look. They, they, that was when they went and, and they just... If your viewers could actually go on YouTube, and go to the YouTube search engine and type Marshall Masters Planet X and see what you see. And mind you, my Yell Books channel on YouTube has over 19 million views to date. And yet I don't exist. I've been disappeared. And um, you've been shadow banned. Shadow banned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I would have been, if it weren't for the fact that I've been doing this for so long and so many people know about me, that would have been the end of me, Michael. I would have been. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, they would have gotten rid of me. And uh, I, I am, I thank God and I thank my loyal audience who have followed me for two decades. Right. Yeah. For the longest time. Uh, I've yeah. known about you, uh, Marshall, even before I interviewed you, interviewed you uh, for the first time. And, you know, you're a guest that's been here since forever. You know, you I think you might have the record here on this program. I'm not sure. It's either you or Mr. James Fetzer who have appeared on this program as many times as both of you have. Wow. Wow. Well, it's always been fun, Michael. Yeah, I mean, th these are great times, and uh, I'm just stunned, at Marshall, that you've been this suppressed, as suppressed as um, Planet X. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't want anybody to see what's happening. Um, and if you go type 
you know, if you go into Google and I'm just going to, while we're talking, I'm going to just go to the Google search engine and I'm going to type Planet X and you have Planet X. It's all kinds of attack stuff. It's a lot of all debunking stuff, stuff, really. Huh? It's a lot of websites that are uh, quote unquote debunking Planet X. It's really That's what right. you pull up. It's either they're debunking Planet X, they're doing two things. They're debunking Planet X, and they're also pushing the Planet Nine uh, narrative. And uh, Planet Nine was something that, Planet Nine is a hoax. It's a psyop. And I've been saying that all the time. Probably it's one of the things that pisses them off. And uh, amongst many. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, Planet Nine was, and we, you know, uh, we discussed this on our site at Yowza. Um, the, if you, uh, if you're on Yowza and you look at it, there is a, uh, Planet Nine debunked by Marshall Masters, and that is, uh, back in November 21. So I'm wondering if my Planet X, Planet Nine debunking articles is what really set off all of this suppression because I totally took it down. It could have been. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. So you could just, if you went to Yowza and you go Planet X9 debunked, and there you go, um, Planet 9, just very simple. What happened was uh, there were astronomers in South America uh, at a large telescope array, second or first largest in the world. And they discovered, these two astronomers discovered a very old, probably cold brown dwarf star and a second object, which was a large rocky planet. And they did a brilliant white paper on it, Michael, and they were doing good science. All right. And what they were doing was putting out to the other astronomers, here's what we found. Let's see if somebody else can go observe the same object, because that's what astronomers do. We saw it. Here it is. Somebody else go see if you see it, too, so you confirm the observation. It's not a one-trick pony. And um, these guys were absolutely body slammed by the Washington Post. All right. So, I mean, this was definitely your elites. And... Uh, they did a, 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 an awful smear article, and they always go after Sitchin, Clyde Tombaugh, and Percival Lowell. Those are the three they have to they go at all the time, and I'll explain it why. In a, in, but first, um, they in this article, what they were doing is they had to fill a void that they created. Because what they did was with these astronomers in South America, they fell on them like a ton of bricks. All right. It's like raining anvils. These guys had to withdraw their papers and go dark. And they forced them into silence. And then that created a void. And so in order to fill the void that they created with their suppression, they get this guy who's a real schnook um, to come out with Planet Nine. And Planet Nine appears to be, uh, what they did was they went and they got some graduate paper that was sitting on a shelf sucking dust, you know, dusted it off, dressed it up a little bit and put it out there. It was so thin that Italian astronomers, down they downloaded that and the whole Planet Nine thing, and they tore it apart from piece to piece. They mm. said, "This is this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy science because it was it was it was because it's a psyop, and uh, they got silenced. And today, this if you want to you know if you want to see your government lying to your face about Planet X, go search on Planet Nine. That whole thing is a PSYOP fabrication. It is all a PSYOP fabrication, Planet Nine. And uh, these are the kind of things. But on the other hand, it's 
we're it's it's becoming moot, Michael. And the reason why is more people are seeing it now than ever before. And in the coming months, it's going to become even more noticeable. Um, the We're going to have more observations. In 2024, it is going to achieve perihelion, which is its closest distance to the sun. And then from there, it starts arcing over our orbit and going back into the southern skies, passing between Mars and Jupiter. And uh, in 24, it's just going to be a regular fixture in the sky because it's going to be far enough out from behind the sun that it's not. You, we're not going to have this restriction of it being a you know in the morning or in the evening for a short period of time that's the way it is when an objects are closer behind the sun you're observing them and once they're far enough away the glare of the sun is not drowning them out and so you can see them continually during the day so in 24 most everybody is going to be seeing most every day uh they're going to be seeing multiple objects in the sky a light show yeah it's going to be a light show. I like that. And uh, when that happens, the uh, you know it is the lies are going to Ooh. pile up. Have you ever? Did you ever get a chance to see that movie? Don't look up. I absolutely did. Of course. Did you like it? Uh, part I, of I'm, part of me yes, and part of me no because of the cast. But I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the story, but some of the actors I could really care less about. Aside from that, I thought it was a great film. Yeah. Take Don't Look Up, and they were talking about a comet. You know, if you think about it, because you saw the movie, right. substitute the word comet for vac. Mm, true. And it's yeah. all the same. The yeah. vac. It's, it is a real, it's, it's a perfect spoof on all of this stuff. And uh, it's, uh, people just followed this, and I think, you know, I, to understand the thinking and the insanity of what's going on. And you, as the thing about the movie that really got me is you see the people and they're on TikTok doing TikTok videos and they're all going, yeah, man, we're not looking up. We're not looking up. And I'm thinking, what a perfect way to portray the stupidity of man. Oh, absolutely. It was a great reflection of a modern day culture, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was an excellent one. It's and it's one to look at in terms of yeah. what we have here. So uh, we're going to continue having all of this suppression. There's nothing to do about it. I could see it happening too. Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll, they'll stay quiet and they'll sort of uh, explain it in a way that will make most of the general public sort of dismiss it altogether, as they usually do. Yeah, yeah. The public is pretty stupid. No doubt. I mean, it is, but it is. Um, the majority is really stupid. Um, you know, me and you, yeah, we're in the, rule the world. We're in the small demographic uh, of people that um, are in tune with a lot of things. But it's the majority that is the real issue, Marshall. The ones that we can't really uh, get to think in any other way, other than just what they see on television. Yeah, yeah, but it is also. Um, there's some, I'm seeing some interesting things going on in terms of, I did a, another reason why I'm being suppressed is my new series that I put out, The Jab. And uh, The Jab, it, if you go to my homepage, and it's right up there, and you'll see um, the, um, you, you'll see the series. There are six videos. And for those of you who are up to speed on the vaccines and everything that's going on, this will be interesting for you in terms of I connect the dots that you're not seeing. I present Trump in a very different way from everyone, including left and the right. Um, I saw what I found was a pattern with, with Trump that was amazing. What I did with this is actually I reverse engineered the topic and to put a historical perspective on it. 
But the most important thing about the with Marshall Masters, uh, and come to my website, yowusa.com, to watch it, because you, you can find me on Odyssey. I don't know about the other platforms, I mean, search engines, you know, because of the suppression. But the thing about the jab, what I did was, this is for those of us who have someone in our life who was possibly and now they're beginning to realize uh, this was, a, was not a good idea. Yeah, it was a bad idea. That's right. A very bad and, idea. And uh, they're struggling because now they're at the beginning of awareness. And this awareness is just terrifying for them. And what I wanted to do was, because I look at a lot of reporting on the vaccine, and a lot of the reporting is angry, as, as one could expect. I mean, we're being violated in the ways most direly. And so people are doing that. And for those of us who are up on the topic, yeah, we're just used to people being teed off about it. But what I did the jab, I was really thinking about these are people who have been in their, you know, they're the truth deniers as opposed to the vaccine deniers. And uh, the truth deniers, they don't want to see it. They're, they've been in their little bubble, but they're, you know, either they're having consequences or someone close to them that they know is having consequences. Um, and now they're starting to ask that fatal question of awareness. What exactly am I looking at? When you ask that question, that's it. You, <laughs> yeah, what am I looking at? And what are the doors? You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're going down for the count. What am I looking for and what did I put in my body? Yeah. And uh, so what I did was I wanted to, most importantly, just to speak to the people in a very friendly, soft voice and uh, kind of like a Dutch uncle or a, you know, a gentle grandparent. And so that my anger, I didn't want to be angry. I didn't want to call attention to myself that way. I just wanted to present the information as mildly with a mild tone the information is devastating but the way i present it is where i was wanting to make a difference because i've been talking to people who are coming into awareness for 20 years and awareness i don't care when you come into awareness it's not fun i mean once the bubble breaks you're just standing there feeling like somebody just slapped you upside the head with a dead salmon. Right. And you're spitting scales and wondering what in the hell is that all about? Right. right? And uh, that's what's awareness. And so when you're in awareness and all of a sudden it's like, oh, geez. And then you're getting information from people who are, rah, 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 and they're all pissed off. Boy, that's the last thing you need while you're just trying to ease yourself into the topic. So that's what the job is all about, is to help these people. Particularly, I wanted to be in service to families that were mixed, where you have and maybe they're starting to ask a few questions instead of accusations. Now, one of the things that, for those of us who are in awareness with the vaccine, what's happening, is the problem we've had for the last few years is once you're aware that this vaccine is a bio and it's going to kill half or more of the population, when you try and talk about that with the people who are be actively being murdered because they're participating in this, all right, it's like being a one-eyed man in the land of the blind. And the blind are all telling you the same thing. Get a sharp stick and poke out your one good eye so you can be smart like us. And that's the problem is that it's there's this and and to me a lot of it is CIA psyop programming. So it goes you know, when we're sitting here and thinking people are gonna come to awareness with this based on previous experiences, what's happened with people in the past, I don't see it. I see a lot of people clinging to denial, staying in their bubble refusing the awareness, they're going to stay centered in their programming. Um, they may back off from being accusative and nasty to uh, those who are in awareness and seeing what's really going on. But there's going to be a few, 
you know, I and here is where I see a big difference between what I'm seeing and the basic premise of the white hats, really. All right. And the folks that are trying to 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 fight with this is that I don't have as much faith in humans as they do. They have it's almost to me it's Pollyannish. Right. Because when I, you know, I remember the days before the internet and and I'm you know when I was especially when I was growing up there was a lot of competition quality reporting people would tended to take the morning paper or they would just take the Sunday paper and then you had a lot of people that on Sunday if they didn't go to church they would go and uh, to a newsstand and pick up a copy of the the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or one of the big city papers. And that's what they would do on Sundays is they would sit and have their breakfast and read the papers. Um, And we had tremendous amount of information, a lot of reporting. There was a lot of good reporting. It was very competitive. Yeah, there was political slanting, but the reporting had integrity, even though it was slanted. And uh, they would follow the facts. At that time, Americans were much smarter collectively. We were, as a people, we were much more intelligent, well-informed, and we would, you know, get wise to these things much more quickly. Now, with social media in particular, the Internet has done more to make us stupid than it did to make us smarter and folks just they i there's this there's no longer a search for truth in the public they're not interested in truth it's narrative they just want to because the narrative is what defines the bubble and so they want to stay in the bubble so they follow the narrative to keep them in the bubble and then that way life is stable they get up go to work You know, da 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 da, watch television, figure out what to buy, go buy crap, go to sleep, get up the next day, do it all over again. All right. And people like to have that continuity and to have that comfort of knowing that life is pretty much in control. They don't want to see what's beyond the bubble. They don't want to see. And we are looking at a population that has, for decades, been heavily psyoped by our own government. And so personally, I think that people who are following the White Hats and they're going, you know, I, I watched Trump and he he gave a, a, a brilliant July 4th speech. I thought it was really good. It was much, I enjoyed it much more than his typical stump speeches hmm. because he was getting, he was very substantive in talking about history. And that was really important did it good. And Trump is always saying it's always going to, you know, what's coming is going to be better than anything you could imagine. And it's all going to be hopeful. And America is going to be great again and all that. In three years, our population is going to be decimated. And, you know, it's we're we're on a false bubble of hope uh, with the White Hats. And I, I feel that's their their messaging and a lot of people who follow them are really concerned with the messaging because the messaging it just feels like we know that on the dark side i mean they're lying to us at every turn but with the white hats you know it's is it happy bullshit or are they telling us the real deal and i don't think we're getting the real deal except in tidbits and nibbles here and there I mean, what I observe with white hat messaging is that the goalpost must be uh, must have an anti gravity device because it's floating and moving away from us all the time. All the time, you know? they keep telling us, "Oh boy, when you get it, it's going to be great," and then the goalposts move. And then we get these things. Well, we got our asses kicked today, but that's good because now we got them where we want them. All right, and. What I am seeing is that, you know, first off, this thing, uh, the white hats are in control. No, they're not. They're not. They have the initiative and they're using the initiative and they're using it. But it is still moves and counter moves. It's still 5D chess. 
They're up against a very formidable enemy. And so this is, you know, I don't see this as, you know, they were suddenly, boom, it's all going to get better and kumbaya and the whole world can breathe in relief. Yeah, I, to I me, don't see that happening anytime. And yes, uh, Marshall, I'm well aware of all this um, white hat talk. You know, this is something that's been going on for a number of years now. And yes, the repeated moving of the goalpost is quite annoying. It makes me wonder, the people that watch these sort of videos, do they just lack discernment? No, it's... What it's is it with these people? Awareness. Um... You know, there's a great line from the movie Rogue One, you know, rebellions are built on hope. And uh, they're following it because it's the only thing you got. You know, you go with what you got. And even if you know, it's not quite there. And what they're trying to do, the, the, here's the things that the White Hats are doing with their messaging that really disturbs me. And first off is that in order to get people to uh, rally to a cause, you have to say, this is for you. This is what's going to happen for you personally. So personally, we want to see the end of this. We want to have, uh, you know, uh, we want to have peace. We uh, want to have prosperity. We want to see America great again and all of this stuff. And this is all about what us and we want for us. And so they're doing it. What they are not doing a, an effective job of telling everybody is that this isn't about make America great again. America is a dead whale. All right. And it's when this is over, we're going to have a much smaller uh, population. We're going to have a lot of reduced. We're, you know, life is going to become uh, more rural, but it's it'll be good, all right. And however, this fight against the dark forces, it's not going to be over in a couple of weeks or a couple of years. To me, I just say it's a hundred-year war, and this is year one, all right. In other words, we're going to be fighting this fight all the way up until, you know, we're dust in, in the ground. That's it. You're yeah. going to die and we're still going to be fighting. We're barely uh, in the inception stage of it all. I mean, we haven't even merged with machine yet. So just wait till that happens. Then we... Oh, yeah. I mean, this, yeah, like you just said, this is uh, year one. This is year one. This is an ongoing thing. We're in it. Here's what the White Hats are not telling people because they don't want to turn them off. The real fight is not about make America great again. That's a dead whale. It's a dead whale. America could be better. It'll be different. But I don't think we're going to be great again. Most likely not. Most likely not. Not with our. Not with how the government has essentially merged with corporations. That's, That's right. the issue, Marshall. That's right. This is going to. This is going to take time. We don't know what's involved, but. It is a long, hard battle. We're in it. In other words, this is about we're in it for the species. This is the messaging that this is where I am so disappointed with the White Hats, is that their messaging on this is so negligent, it's almost dishonest. All right? We're in it for the species. If our species, if we don't overcome this battle for freedom, for the human race, we are going extinct. That's all. The people that were vaccinated are not homo sapien anymore. Once you are vaccinated, you are homo synthetic. You are a completely different animal because the vaccine sends the bioweapon into the cell and through a process that I explain this, if you, you know, watch my series, The Jab, I break this out very gently, but I explain all of it. And, um, you know, very quickly, the, there's uh, the, the six videos. The first one is the big lie, because that's why people took the jab, was about the big lie, which had nothing to do with Trump being cheated. Then in the second one, I talk about morning mojo. I am a COVID survivor. 
and I explain what I did and I give people a lot of resources that they can start looking websites, people to research, things to follow up. In the third video, it's just called Trump. And what I do in that third video is I present what really happened with Trump. And it's frankly, yeah, people aren't going to see it until they see it. And I lay it right out. I don't, you know, it's not where I'm sitting here blowing opinions out my backside and going, hoop, 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 hoop. I'm going, here, here it is. Boom. Here's a screenshot. Here's an article. Here's a person. Here's a statement. Here's a this. I'm presenting all the evidence. And when you see with Trump, it is a whole different ball of game. Uh, then there's the gotcha. And then in the gotcha, this is how, when they do turn you from homo sapien to homo synthetic or homo satanic, and that's really what they want to do is make you homo satanic. And I explain exactly how they did this in the gotcha. Then in the fifth one, it's death tsunamis. And this is what's coming in the next few years. And the suppression on the deaths is Orwellian. I mean, they have really capped it. People don't understand how many have all died. By some estimates, globally, 400 million have died all right, as a result of all of this. Have you noticed that, by the way, Marshall, those numbers aren't out in the public? No, they're not. And remember, not. remember early and on, the, they had that whole hit count. Uh, all the news networks were, they were doing the whole body count numbers with That's right. What happened? And not, not anymore. Not anymore. I wonder. And uh, <laughs> so I explain in Death Tsunamis, it's the fifth one, uh, what's coming and uh, what your odds of surviving it. And Death Tsunamis is where I tell you how to figure your odds. Uh, number six is a few good seeds. And this is about uh, looking further downstream and what do we need to do to save our species from extinction. Because once you're genetically modified, you're no longer the same species. Yeah, you're no longer human. That's right. You're no longer human. And also on that page, uh, I put a number of resource links, a whole slew of them, for different things you can follow up on that, that I'm talking about it. And I still get back to why are the white hats really suppressing the message that this is more than MAGA. This is about we're in it for the species. That's it. Do we, because one of the things about the VAC, the program, excuse me, is the VAC has a way that disconnects you from God. It can isolate the God frequency. And what they can actually do is make it so that you no longer feel the presence of God. You no longer can talk to God. There are a lot of people that don't do that and think it's nonsense. A lot of people do it and they know it's real. All right. But if you know it's real and you do it and you've been back, all of a sudden, you're either not going to be able to do it or worse yet, when you think you're talking to God, you're actually going to be talking to artificial intelligence that's manipulating and controlling you. And because uh, the whole point of this bio system is it is designed for centralized AI control so that they can do targeted assassinations and anonymous eugenics. So there is a lot to fight for. There's a lot on a lot at stake. And I see the situations that, that events right now we have a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise out there. But you now think about an old war movie and the submarine launches the torpedoes and what happens? Uh, a destroyer then, you know, races up, depth charges the submarine and destroys it and it sinks to the bottom with a loss of all hands, which is fine. You've killed that submarine. But what about the torpedoes? Torpedoes are still in the water and running true. All right. So even if you kill the submarine, the torpedoes are still running true and the torpedoes are going to hit. And when they do, it's going to be devastating. But I am seeing um, is and, and 
I'm sure you, you've got to have some listeners out going, okay, is he throwing in the towel? Is he saying it's hopeless? Uh, you know, that's it. It's all over, but the crying. Let's get Peggy Lee and sing, you know, is that all there is? Absolutely not. Because I'm observational and I tend to follow numbers and statistics more than anything else. And what's happened is that and I explained this in the third video, which is Trump, um, without, you know, giving too much of that. Let me just talk about what I didn't mention in here and where I see the long term. This is about population. Now, let's go back to Nazi Germany. And what did the Nazis know? The Nazis understood that 20 percent of the population are critical thinkers. And they'll look at the stuff and they know it's lies and they will know the emperor has no clothes. You know, this was the thing. And these are the, uh, uh, you know, this is your middle class. These are the, uh, the ones that the communists want to destroy. Look how they're destroying the middle class. Because in your middle class is where you're going to have your critical thinkers. All right. And you're also going to have spiritual thinkers. And critical thinkers and spiritual thinkers come at the same conclusions a little differently. The critical thinkers are follow a deductive process of uh, observation, uh, accumulating evidence, contemplation, and forming uh, a hypothesis. On the other hand, spiritual thinkers are within their beliefs, within their connection with creator, and they just know bad when they see bad. You know, if you, Listen to a judge in a courtroom, and how do they? How does a judge define pornography? You know it when you see it, all right? And for spiritual thinkers, no differently. They know it when they see it. And what was happening is that if you look at the effort of the Biden administration, who were they attacking, all right? They were talking what the communists would call the bourgeoisie. And... They were taking the stupids, and I call them stupids because that's what the elites call them. They also call them useless eaters and other, other pejorative terms. Uh, but these are people who, they're not, a lot of, you know, you got a lot of education. Actually, stupids, the more time you have spent in an American university or college, the more culturally stupid you are. because. The more education, the more time you spent in American institution of higher learning, the more likely you are not only but fully boosted and totally on board with the woke agenda. And lack common sense, really. Absolutely. You're taught out of it. And uh, so these folks, none, you know, they all piled in. They're taking the jab for the elites with this eugenics thing of reducing the population, and I'm talking dramatically. I mean, the, the elites want to reduce us down to a half a billion from eight, all right? And uh, we know that from uh, the um, uh, the stones that were, you know, had that first one, gosh, I can't remember. They, they were destroyed, and uh, it had, you know, reduce population to a half a billion. That's what they want to do. They want to bring it down to controllable numbers. But what they needed to do was they needed to eliminate the bourgeoisie because they knew that this would, um, there, there are three different versions of the vaccine. One was a high dose, one was low dose, and another was a uh, placebo. But what we found, a lot of the placebos were biological placebos, but they still had the, um, uh, the graphene in them. And so that's part of the transhumanism agenda. But the whole point of what the elites were trying to do, and you think about it, is they were using the stupids like a, a herd of cattle and driving them at the spiritual and critical thinkers, who are about a third of the population collectively. And the reason why I say a third of the population is it's generally accepted that one third of the population believes in one conspiracy theory 
or more. And so if you believe in a conspiracy theory, you're definitely a critical thinker or a spiritual thinker. You're not a stupid. And they needed, they had this two thirds of the population that all you have to do is tell them, hey, we're good people, we're authority, we're here to do this for you, and it's necessary. And when you do that, slave programming kicks in and people just line up and roll up their sleeves and they don't ask any questions. All right. And these are good people. These are the kind of people that just want to have families, good lives. A lot of them would give you the shirt off their back, but they're not capable of being critical thinkers. You know, they'd much rather watch, you know, girls shaking their boobs on TikTok. <laughs> oh, of course. Than diving into this stuff. A lot of and, the majority would. Yeah. Unfortunately. And so what they were doing is think about it. They took the majority who go, went look hook, line, and sinker for the PSYOP. Absolutely hook, line, and sinker. And then they started driving them at the people who were what the vaccine deniers, which is code word for spiritual and critical thinkers. And what they were, and I explained this whole sequel of events. I actually lay out what their original strategy is and how that got side rail, you know, derailed. But what they were really doing was taking the stupids and driving them at the thinkers to force the thinkers to take the jab, to humiliate them, destroy them, hurt them in any way possible that they would just say, I give up. I'll put this filth in my body just to get you to leave me alone. And that didn't work. The spiritual thinkers and the spiritual and the critical thinkers, some of them, maybe, you know, if it was a third, maybe 5% of them wound up taking the jab in a moment of weakness, but the rest of them stood firm. And it's actually the more pressure against them that was applied, the firmer their resolve became. And so for all of those people out there who refused this fact and had to suffer as a result of it, I want you to know you are heroes for humanity. For humanity, not just America, but for humanity, you showed tremendous strength of character. And here's why this is a real problem for the globalists and their eugenics strategy, is what we're going to see in the next few years is that the population of stupids is going to decline rapidly, rapidly. And what is going to happen is that critical and spiritual thinkers for the first time in the history of humankind will be in a majority, not a minority. Why is it that we have been easily manipulated as a species for thousands of years? Was that there was always this one third that could see the emperor had no clothes and two thirds that said, we're down with the emperor. We don't care what he's wearing. All right. Now that's going to flip. And so the stupids are going to be a minority and they're going to be a fractured minority. They're 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 not going to be terribly swift. And who's going to take control? It will be spiritual and critical thinkers. So what we're going to see is that politically things are statistically going to shift to the far right. When those, remember the torpedoes, the submarine was sunk, but torpedoes are still tracking true. Boom, they hit. And what happens when they hit? Who's going to go down with that ship? Mostly the stupids who just said, oh yeah, put this in me. Here's the thing. Once this is uh, going to be a, it, it, it's a period of numbers. And what's already in motion is that we're going to we're going to see a shift in the population. Uh, you're going to have people who are going to abandon uh, the narrative view. They're going to come over. I don't see them that much. But the bottom line, Michael, is that the trends that we're seeing right now with everything that's happening with the vaccines and the people that are dying, this is really getting bad. 
and it's going to get much, much worse. And uh, what we're, you know, what we're anticipating, what the doctors are talking about, the docs that I talk with, uh, and, and I get my information from actual physicians who've been treating people for, and they treated them off protocol. They didn't do the Fauci stuff. And uh, they were actually doing good, good stuff for people. And this was uh, a very, very essential thing. And if you look at what Biden's been doing and what the left has been doing, the Democrats or the communists now, who are they attacking? They were attacking all of these people who are wise to what they're doing. And, and I explain exactly why this came about. In my uh, in my series, particularly in the third one at YOWUSA Trump, and if you see that, you'll see how it's going. But the bottom line on this is that everyone, you know, wants to see a big victory. They want to see trials, and they want to see tribunals, and they want to see these evil people get their comeuppance. Right, right. That's what this is all about. That's not going to happen, right? though. It's We're going to see it, but it's if you look to see what really has been going on is that the they haven't been able to take out the people who are their real enemies. The low-hanging fruit, the useless eaters, the, the majority of the people, eliminating them was very easy. They're gullible. Right. They've, they've been programmed from birth to be gullible. To be that way, right? yeah. This is not, and, and I don't want to use these, they're good people, they're bad people. They, they, no, no, don't. This is, we have no way of knowing. I mean, think about cattle. They're in a stockyard, and they're sitting in the stockyard, and they're going, you know, this is the last stop from here. They're going to put me into a building, and they're going to blow my you know, bash my brains in it, and I'm going to become steaks. They don't know that. They're just going, oh, this is a new place with all the food and water I could want and some shade. What's not to like? And they don't understand, you know, they just simply don't understand. <laughs> you know, they're going, they're, they've been, they're, they're being culled and slaughtered. And so for most of the people, they don't understand it, but for the ones that get it, all right, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to get sucked into this. And so look at the reason why we have no borders and who they're bringing across. Uh, they're desperate. They, uh, the Democrat Party has effectively the majority of its base. It's going to take time for this to unfold, but that's what they've done. And they know that they've a lot of their base. And they're desperate to get people to replace them so that they can hold power through corrupt elections. And so that's why they're flooding it. And when you look at how they're flooding it, where are they sending these people? They're sending them to the same police places where the high, real nasty doses of the vaccine are going. That's interesting. The nasty vaccine and together with, you know, all of this push of getting these illegals, and they're all going to the same places, red states. Right. Because the red states is where critical and spiritual thinkers are the dominant populations, all right? And that's why they're pushing them at that point, because they missed the mark. If things had gone the way they wanted, if Hillary had come in, they would have used the stupids, driven at them, driven them like herded cattle in a stampede, would have driven them straight at critical and spiritual thinkers and would have forced them to abdicate. And then on top of that, we would have had many more years of these horrible lockdowns and all of these other things. Even the critical thinkers would have gotten to a point where they're going, Jesus, I'm so miserable. I'll do whatever. I'll do whatever. I'll take the frickin' vaccine. The government wants okay. to um, enforce climate law as well. I mean, that's right around the corner. They're pushing for that now. That's right. That's right. So this is the, they're coming back to do everything. So what, what's the bottom line for everybody? Well, the bottom line is if you are unvaccinated, 
you're going to be in that third of the population that can walk and chew gum, and you're going to be your chances of surviving all of this are significantly higher than the people who are vaccinated, significantly higher. And what will happen in two, three, four years is the balance of power is going to change by virtue of a new population, a surviving population. So getting from here to there, is it about us having the most successful strategies the best plans for dealing with these elites who are dug in like a tick and they're everywhere, all right? Uh, can, you know, what can we do? Well, the thing is, is that here's what we do. We do the same thing George Washington did to win the Revolutionary War. As a military leader, George Washington was a schlub, okay? He had a couple of notable victories, but for the most part, he was, you know, he was up against uh, British who they, you know, they're the past masters of battlefield war and combat tactics. And he understood it wasn't about any major battles or, you know, it, taking the, doing something that would defeat the British army. He knew he couldn't defeat the British army in a stand-up fight. So his strategy instead was, we keep fighting a war of attrition. We win if we just simply avoid losing. You don't have to struggle to win. You just have to continue struggling persistently so that you do not be, that you're not defeated, that you're not destroyed. And so that's the reason why, you know, they would, the, uh, our revolutionary, you know, army would get out of the way. We were, you know, harassing them, shooting their officers, doing a lot of things, keeping them engaged, tying them up. But it was a war of attrition and in which Washington understood that the key to winning the Revolutionary War was not to lose it. And at the end of the war, when the French came in, that was the final blow and the British knew it was game over and we won the Revolutionary War. So I see a similar repeat of the Revolutionary War. A lot of people are following MAGA and they want to see huge wins, big battlefield successes and all of that. You know, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen that many. Have you? I don't believe so. We have, you know, it, it you know, it, it kind of reminds you, you know, <laughs> Star Wars, <laughs> And the rebellion is, you know, they're oh, yeah. always off on these little planets and right. moons and <laughs> yes. besieged. Uh, but, th and then they get their lucky shot. I think this is more of if we, those of us who are unvaccinated because we're in, we have the strength of character to see things as they are and we know what we know. And no one is going to shake us with a narrative. If we can just continue applying pressure that this is a continuous battle, a war of attrition, we will eventually win because the deep state is exhausting resources. It is exhausting and it is murdering its support base. I mean, these people are just stupid as hell. And the only thing that will save them is if we do something stupid like falling for their bluff, all right? But this is going to take a lot of time. This is going to take a lot of time. And if we just stay the course, we will prevail. And I also believe we're going to have allies that will emerge because, you know, when did the French get involved with us? When it looked like, you know, we were doing, making, some, taking some serious ground here. All right, and we were in the fight, and we weren't going to knuckle under. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to back a wuss. All right, so what we were doing is, we were just continuing the fight. That's what we have to do. I would be so happy if the elites uh, would, you know, that uh, for the white hats, not, not the elites, but the white hats, the leaders. <sighs> It's getting thin. 
it's getting thin. We keep hearing the same thing. Boy, when it comes, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. I really? hear that, yeah. Yeah. And, but will uh, it, though? But will it, though, Marshall? That's the problem. Will it? We don't know. We don't know. I just this don't want to get high war. on hope. That's all. It's There's hope. But also in war, you you just you don't stop fighting. That's all. You don't give up. You don't stop. They sure as hell are not going to stop fighting. Right, right. Michael, they're going to stay at us like yeah. crazy. All right. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to be dogged in our determination. And also it's another thing, you know, to understand that the torpedoes in the water, if you have a chance to get off the ship while there's time, <laughs> Not bad. Or at least get up on deck where you can get to a, you know, you can jump in the water and get out of it and not go to the ship. But this is this is going to happen. It is going to play out. The White Hats, I think, in terms of their tactics and their maneuvers, I see them being led down rabbit holes, but I see them doing the same thing to the Black Hats. I mean, it's they're all doing... You know, it, it's like watching in the old Westerns, you know, and you had the good guy and the bad guy, right? And the good guy, you know, is always rescuing the gal when he wins, uh, you know, he kisses his horse, rides off into the sunset, and the bad guy is always doing the dastardly things. But you know what? They have the same equipment. They got horses. They got saddles. They got pistols. They got rifles. It's all the same stuff. It's what's different is what you're fighting for and how you do it. And so that's, you know, that's what we have to do. The problem for the White Hats is if they were to realistically just come out and tell people honestly, honestly, put the crap. A lot of people are starting to see through it. And that is, you know, and it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But they come out and they just say, look, folks, we're in it for the species. This is a long haul fight. We'll probably still be fighting this battle long after your ancestors have buried you. But we have to fight this fight. Otherwise, our species is forever lost. And that's what the battle is really all about. And we're not getting that level of honesty because the White Hats know that with the population that is me, 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 me first, that is the wrong narrative to say it's in it for the species. They're going to say, I don't give a crap about the species. Somebody else can care. I just care about me. What are you going to do for me? Is, is my side going to win? Are my politics going to prevail? You know, what, what's the deal? That's what they want to know. All right. And so they have to do that. But, and that's been working remarkably well for them for years. But this battle is going on too long, too hard, and it's too slow. And it's and it's time for the White Hats to just really lay it on the line. I see them nibbling around the corners, and they're trying to find, you know, does this explanation or this position, get does it get traction with people? They're trying to do that, and it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. And so consequently... And also, I see that they have way too much faith in the stupids. There, there's this notion that all of these people who are going down this destructive, self-destructive path are suddenly going to wake up and go, no, we're with you. All right. Well, you know, 50 years ago, that's how it would have worked in America. But we've had two generations going on three generations, methodically psyoped by our own communist government agencies, CIA, FBI, all of them. They're all our enemies. They say they're, you know, I don't care what they say. See what they're doing. They're against us. All right. And this is the white hat narrative is still clinging to this notion that we're as smart as we were 50 years ago. Compared to 50 years ago, America's as dumb as a box of rocks. We're stupid. We're goddamn stupid. That's how we got into this whole situation in the first place. 50 years ago, this whole COVID pandemic, 
would have folded up day one, wouldn't even have been attempted. But they had all the have all the levers, and what was more important is they had a dumbed down population that's all walking around saying, "Don't look up, don't look up, don't look up, don't look up." There it is. So, for those of you out there unvaccinated, and you're going, you know, this uh, what's wrong with this picture? All right, the messaging has to change, and the because the fight has never changed. The fight is about saving our species. That's what this is about. It is say about saving our species. And we are facing enemies that are inhuman, period. And this is what we have to start working on and moving in this direction and accepting the fact that this is going to be a multi-generational war going on. Because even if America is freed, and I think that is going to happen. What do we do about our brothers and sisters in the world? You know, our country right now, we are the evil empire. That's right. We're the ones that have been going out and overturning uh, elected uh, governments. Oh, we've been doing that doing forever. It. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> we terrible. Have a, we, we have a long track record of overthrowing yeah. governments forever. Yeah. Why do you see so many nations that are switch, switching over to BRICS? The petrodollar is dead. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And it's going to, and boy, it's going to, and, 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 and it's really going to hit us because that's it. The Saudis are no, you know, they're no, they always were. The deal was with the Saudis, they only pay in oil. That was, we were the reserve currency of the world. We're not. We're not the reserve currency. We're the, the Saudis will sell and slap a silver deagle on, on the bar. <laughs> right. Gets a drink. I, I was going to quickly mention we are the infidels as well. You know, we've always been labeled that way by every other country in the world. You know, we've always been the bad guys, Marshall. People forget that we, we are fully inside of a holy war. Yeah, it is a holy war. And once we face it and we face the resolve, then we'll do it. But right now, they don't want to send out that message because uh, it probably would, it would, that message, if they really, you know, said instead of MAGA, it's about, you know, preserving the species. They're, what they're trying to do is to, to get as many of the stupids to wake up to come into awareness and to come on board. And I, you know, I, and these, and they, they have these numbers that they say, oh, we need to have 81% or more or 90% or more, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And this is amazing. You know, what the white hats are telling us is 10% of the population is running the other 90%. We have to get ten permit. We have to get the permission of this ten percent to have a real life. That's insane. But it's insane in terms of that's what the people are. What are they going to be looking if they're coming into awareness? They're realizing they got sold a bill of goods. It is going to be. It's not going to be what ha what happens to us collectively as a species. Where are they? What's their traction point? What does it mean to me? Me 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 me. Oh no. If you're hearing this now, that means we have already skipped over to Patreon. If you want the rest of this interview, please go to patreon.com forward slash Michael Deacon and subscribe and join us. We'd love to see you out there. Remember, you can subscribe 